Hello friends, welcome to another video. Today is going to be a review of Shadow of Night, which is a discovery of Witches Book 2 by Deborah Harkness. I read the first one, I don't know, I feel like it's been over a week. It's a thicker book and it's taken me a little bit longer to read. That's all right. I will put the link for the first book in the description box and the, the third book when I get to it. Um, if you haven't read the first one, I may give some spoilers. So just so you know, I'll read the description that they have here. A discovery of witches introduced Diana Bishop, Oxford scholar and reluctant witch and vampire geneticist Matthew Claremont, two otherworldly beings who found themselves at the center of a battle over a lost, enchanted manuscript known as Ashmole 782. Drawn to each other despite long-standing taboos and in pursuit of Diana's spellbound powers, the two now embark upon a time-walking journey. Book two of the All Souls trilogy plunges Diana and Matthew into an Elizabethan London a world of spies and subterfuge, and of coterie, coterie uh, of Matthew's old friends, the mysterious school of night. The mission is to locate a witch, to tutor Diana, and to find traces, traces of Ashmole 782. But as the net of Matthew's past tightens around them, they embark on a very different journey, one that takes them into the heart of 1,500-year-old vampire's shadowed history and secrets. For Matthew Claremont, time travel is no simple matter, nor is Diana's search for the key to understanding her legacy. Oh my goodness. Sorry, guys. My nose is like crazy itchy. So this one picked up almost pretty much directly where uh, Discovery of Witches left off. Discovery of Witches ended with them jumping back in time. And this one starts with them arriving back in 1590, which is the year that they jumped to. Um, it's mostly written in first person from Diana's point of view, but there's occasional third person spots with some of the other characters. And there's a couple of small chapters where they jump to present day and give us a little about what's happening in the present day with the uh, the other characters that got left behind. There is actually a loophole there with one of the things that they do um, that kind of bugs me. I'm hoping they fill it or solve it or whatever, explain it in the third book. Because I noticed it right away. I was like, um, that shouldn't happen. Uh, but. If you read the books, hopefully you'll spot it. It's right after the, the, it's the first jump back to the present after they first arrive. There's a little thing that doesn't make sense to me and it doesn't get explained in this book. So I'm hoping in the third one, um, it gets explained because it doesn't, doesn't make sense to me at all. It's still got all of the main characters that were in the discovery of witches although the ones who are in the present have obviously uh, less of a role but they're still there so Diana and Matthew are main characters and we still hear from Aunt Sarah and Emily and Isabeau and Marcus and Miriam and Amish and Sophie and Nathaniel and in this one we add to our to Matthew's family, we add Philip, which is his dad, who we get to meet, and Gallo Glass. I know it's a weird name. He's Scottish, and he is one of. Um, he's technically Matthew's nephew. He's a vampire too, but his Matthew's brother created him, so he's Matthew's nephew. And then the school is it the School of Night? Is that what they called them? Yeah, School of Night, uh, Matthew's friends from the 1500s, and they're all fairly famous people. Mo a couple of them you should know right off the top. Uh, Christopher Marlowe, who is a famous playwright like Shakespeare. Shakespeare is mentioned, but we don't actually meet him. George Chapman, 
Thomas Harriet, Sir Walter Raleigh, Henry Percy, who is the Earl of Northumberland, and then of course Queen Elizabeth, and Emperor Rudolph of Czech in, in Prague. They also go there too to see him. And a few other, like Dr. D is a minor character. I cannot remember his first name. But he's a famous, uh, famous alchemist. And there's another Mary. Oh, I can't remember her name either. Mary, another famous alchemist. I forgot to write that one down. See, I write my lists. Tell me out. And I still don't remember everything. But those are... And then there's some minor other characters. Um, like some uh, other witches. The other witches that they find to help out... Um, to help out Diana to learn help her learn her magic so there's the a handful of witches that help her out and uh a couple of their servants am i missing anybody i don't think i'm missing anybody important <laughs> but yeah it's their journey traveling through the 1600s um diana figuring out her magic which is awesome figuring that out and what she's supposed to do I'm not going to give away any clues for that at all um, Matthew and Diana's relationship gets better gets deeper gets more involved this book definitely has uh, some more spicy to it because um, the first one was very little I wouldn't call it spicy there's just like a little bit of heat this one is spicier. It is not smut. It is not explicit details, but I would recommend 16 and plus for sure. Because it is definitely, yeah, it's spicy. Not smut though. No, not like uh, <laughs> some of the other books I've read for sure. I didn't find anything overly predictable about this. I told you about that plot hole I found earlier that I hope they figure out. Oh, there was another, I wouldn't call it a plot hole, um, but something happens that you don't find out until near the end, and I'm guessing they'll explain it in the third book. I definitely felt emotions, fascination for sure, happiness, sadness, not as strong as I felt with other books, it was definitely a lot of technical, not as much technical as the first one, because the first one is in our century, and they get more science-y in that one, and this one is 1500 science, so it's a little bit different, but they still get into some of like the alchemy and stuff like that, while they're trying to figure things out. There's a lot about um, her trying to adjust and changing her accent and a little bit more about like the Elizabeth style clothing that they have to wear that's different, which is kind of cool. And just some of the different, the way they treat women differently back then to, as opposed to how they do now. And Matthew's already overprotective as it is, so he's old, like even more so towards Diana. I like the chapters where they jump forward and give us a little glimpse of what the other characters are doing. It's not a huge bit, just little bits throughout the book, which is helpful. I still want to compare it slightly to Twilight. <sighs> and I hope no one gets mad at me for that. If there's some Twilight haters out there, I'm so sorry. That's your fault, your problem, not mine. I didn't have a problem with Twilight. There's nothing wrong with it. And it's definitely Twilight vibes. It is definitely a more mature version, definitely more in depth, more detail. The romance is different for one because they're adults, they're not teenagers. Mm. I don't know what other books I can relate it to. There's definitely secrets in this. But I like how they work them out so that they're not just... Like sometimes in romance books when the couples and they have their like little disagreements and secrets, like they... 
they're always bickering and they're hiding and they're resenting and like it ends up like being a thing and then like blowing up like this one they always figure out how to work things out and they talk and they communicate which I absolutely love I hate I really hate the other ones even though like it's part of the story it's something that bugs me like just talk to each other and everything will work out this one that actually happens and I like that about it the ending um don't give me any spoilers there's minor minor cliffhangers but satisfying enough for the main part of this story they answer some questions they leave some questions open but everything's mostly wrapped up obviously it is not the whole story and there's going to be a sequel but it's definitely way open for the sequel with only minor things closed off and the very last I kind of like how we do it I'm not gonna say that because that'll spoil it I'm just gonna leave it at that all right I would give it a three uh, no yeah three out of five stars good book great writing very likable characters plot is engaging I wouldn't call it a serious <sighs> rye I wouldn't call it a serious page turner for me it took me a little bit longer to read um, I still enjoyed it a lot I really did it's a great story engaging um, I probably will not reread them we'll see what the third book does if it boosts the overall rating for the series as a whole we will have to see but anyway I hope you enjoyed this video like and subscribe and share if you want and I will see you guys in the next video.